Hi, this is Ali, and in this video, I'm going to talk about how to automate your house <laughs> for your um, optimizing your circadian rhythms. Um, so th many of you have found this channel, this Yoga Nidra channel, because of your um, finding it's beneficial for your relationship to sleep. And one of the things that I hear people um, asking me about all the time is, um, what else can I do? What else can I do to help um, myself get into sort of a natural rhythm? And uh, so what I'll talk about today is how my husband has um, automated our house. Because what I found is since we do, we've done that, that our children are really on a good um, waking up and going to sleep schedule where before especially with my daughter um, who's a little bit fiery there was a really a bedtime routine resistance <laughs> with like everything she could do not to go to sleep um, but also uh, sometimes I would feel overstimulated for some reason and not be able to go to sleep and many different things so what I found is since we've automated our house in this way it's been very powerful to the point that um, it, also it was a real struggle to get our daughter out of bed. Like nine o'clock in the morning would roll around and we'd be like still trying to drag her out of bed. And uh, she wakes up 7 a.m. now without anybody coming in to wake her up. It's just automatic. So it's really cool to see how um, powerful it is. It, that happened on day one. Day one she woke up on, at 7 a.m. and continues to wake up at 7 a.m. So. Uh, my husband automated our house based on um, some studying that I've been doing with Andrew Huberman, uh, listening to his pod podcast, which I've talked about before on this channel, and I highly recommend it. So I'll post some links below and I'll post links at the end to his podcast if you want to check it out. Um, but essentially, he is a neuroscientist that studies um, a lot to do with our eyes and how our eyes receive light and how it affects our nervous system and so one of the things that he teaches is that it's important to get daylight first thing in the morning and that sets um, your for when your melatonin is going to release later that night just a little side note for those of you who practice yoga nidra with me here on the channel um, there are some really cool studies that have shown that yoga nidra gives you a natural boost in your melatonin production as well. So when you're in a yoga nidra practice, there's a natural release of melatonin that happens. So that's really exciting as well. Um, <clears throat> so that's another way that you can help your melatonin. A lot of people uh, right now in our current culture are a little bit um, deprived of melatonin because there are a lot of things that can suppress melatonin, one of them being bright light. So um, getting that daylight first thing in the morning. So what we did, the first thing we did was um, have our bedside lamps. So we've got a, a lamp that we put over top of my daughter's bed. It's her night light, but also it is, and I'll link to these products below, but they're hue lights. And so they can do any color and you can automate them all, which is very cool. I don't know how to do any of this, but if you have someone in your life like I do that's good with technology, you can get them to set it up for you. Um, so you get these hue lights. And so what we did was <clears throat> at nighttime, it's a night light. It's a red night light. And then at seven in the morning, it turns on directly over her head and shines um, the blue light of daylight right on her and it pretty much wakes her up instantly it might not wake up people that are a little bit older instantly like that but it's really interesting how powerful it was we're like first day 7 a.m. whereas before we were like struggling to get her out of bed by like 9 just like sort of dragging her to the bathroom to brush, brush her teeth um, so that was really interesting the other thing that we got is this little speaker thing and so what it does is first thing in the morning when oh, and we have on either side of our bedside table we have lamps that also turn on we also have great big windows everywhere that are 
open so the natural daylight comes in as well, but these lights have made a really big difference, I've noticed. So the lamp turns on at 7 a.m. and pretty much wakes everybody up uh, naturally, which is very cool. There's no alarms going off. And the little speaker starts playing bird songs, forest bird songs. So suddenly it's 7 a.m., the forest symphony is happening, the lights come on, and everybody kind of wakes up without a struggle, which is very cool. The biggest part, though, is the nighttime piece. So uh, I believe he said, now I might get this slightly off, but I believe that Dr. Huberman said uh, about two and a half hours before you want to go to sleep is when the overhead lights should go out. So our kids, we want them in bed and sleeping by 9.30. So now what my husband's done is all of the lights turn out at 7 o'clock. All of the, if the TVs are on, they turn off. Everything turns off, especially the overhead lights and the TVs, the screens and stuff like that. And immediately, and what we did was we got these lamps and I'll, I'll post links to them in the blog post and also on YouTube as well. Um, these lamps everywhere that come on at eye level and they are like sunset colored or candlelit colored. Um, and the little speaker starts playing like nighttime cricket sounds. So suddenly it's like very soothing sounds for the nervous system. All the lights are dim and low and all of the TVs go off. So it's this sort of, it's almost like it's very peaceful and it starts to sort of lull everyone into a more quiet state. Um, my daughter will sometimes continue to like do puzzles or play or things like that, but she's not having any um, screens that are keeping her awake. My husband's really into watching like Netflix. <laughs> So I think that it was disrupting our kids' sleep patterns a little bit just to have like a screen on playing, you know, whatever he was watching. And often he would, he'll have it in his headphones, but still the light was what was affecting us all, I think. So those all turn off at 7 p.m. And everybody gets to bed really easily. And we're falling asleep easily as a family, the whole family, and waking up without a struggle. So... Uh, that is how we've automated our house and uh, I found that it's been really really helpful it's working really well and I'll uh, post all of the links in my blog post and also in the in the description of this video below um, and those are links they're affiliate links so I make a small commission at no cost to you if you choose to use those links and um, yeah, another thing that you can do, if you haven't already, most of you who are here on the channel with me, practice Yoga Nidra with me. Um, and what I'm going to do soon is, I've had a lot of people ask me about um, props and setting up for Yoga Nidra for different times of the day. And I like to recommend that you have sort of two different ways that you set yourself up. One way for Yoga Nidras that you're doing in the daytime, where you're using them as a meditation, as a sort of what Dr. Huberman calls a non-sleep deep rest state. Um, so this is the state of yoga nidra, the state of being alert and aware in a deep state of rest or a deep state of sleep. Um, so I recommend that you have a different place that you practice and set that up than in your bed where you go to sleep. Um, I do guide yoga nidras specifically for lulling people to sleep. There are different techniques that I use, whether I want to have someone remain alert and aware in a non-sleep deep rest state, or whether I want to take someone right into like unconscious sleep. So there are different techniques that you can use um, depending on what you're trying to create for the practitioner. And so be sure that you are um, also creating different places that you practice. So if you're practicing yoga nidra, and I'll, I'll link to this video too, because I'll, um, I'll make a video on how to set up for your non-rest deep sleep, deep, non-sleep deep rest state, and how to set up for sleep, because 
those should be separate so that your um, sort of unconscious or subconscious mind isn't confusing the two practices. Okay, so I'll link here to um, some of those yoga nidras that you can try and the difference between a yoga nidra for insomnia or for going to sleep and yoga nidra for non-sleep deep rest. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below.